whiskey cocktails don't have to be old and boring like the Manhattan and old fashioned. There can be a lot of fun that you can have with whiskey. And in this video, I made 10 easy and awesome whiskey cocktails that don't suck. All right, let's get right into it. There's a reason this has traveled across the world on a ton of different menus and become a modern classic. And if you haven't had one, I'm about to blow your mind. If you have had one, you should probably make yourself another one because it's probably been a little bit. Let's make a paper plane. This cocktail is super simple. It's only four ingredients and they're all the same measurement. So we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of Aperol. Next up is Amaro Nonino, which is a nice sweet Amaro. It's really complex and delightful. Uh, we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of Amaro Nonino. And of course, for our whiskey, we're gonna use Old Granddad's Bottled in Bond. I love it for the higher proof and it's gonna really stand up well in this cocktail. Ice, and that's it. Shake it up. And then you're gonna grab yourself, it's supposed to be a chilled coupe, but this one, I didn't give it enough time, unfortunately. Uh, then we're just gonna double strain that out. Look at that color. And there you have a paper plane. Mm. Outstanding. It's got that nice lemon tartness to it. It's a little bit bitter, a little bit sweet from the Aperol and the Amaro Nonino, and that bourbon really shines through, and it's nice, rich, and complex. This is literally one of the most refreshing bourbon cocktails I've ever had. Let's make a Kentucky Buck. We're gonna grab a whole strawberry, put it into your tin, and then we're gonna muddle it up. Do a half ounce of simple syrup, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, two dashes of Angostura bitters. Let's do two ounces of a good bourbon. I'm gonna use Eagle Rare. I can already hear you guys. Oh wow, they're using an allocated bottle in a cocktail. Well, you know what? I do what I want. And when I worked at a bourbon focused bar, this was our well bourbon. Add ice and shake it up. Now let's grab our highball, fill it up with some fresh ice, and we're gonna double strain this out to get those strawberry pieces out. And then last but not least, some ginger beer. And we're gonna top that off with some ginger beer. Then we're gonna garnish with a lemon wheel and a little strawberry. And there you have a Kentucky Buck. Delightful, refreshing, perfect for the summertime, perfect for the anytime. It is really, really tasty and refreshing. Quite possibly the sexiest whiskey cocktail on the planet, the New York Sour. So this one's super easy. We're gonna do two ounces of a rye whiskey. You can use bourbon if you want. I really like my sour style cocktails with rye. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, Add ice, shake, grab our glass, large cube, and double strain. We're not quite done. No New York Sour is complete without some red wine floated over the top. So we're gonna do a Bonardo, which is an Argentinian red wine. And there we have the sexy New York Sour. Oh, the red wine gives it a nice, deep complex flavor and it mixes beautifully with the sweetness and tartness from the lemon. So good. Old fashions don't have to be boring. Let's spice it up and make an American trilogy. We're gonna do one sugar cube. I'm using a sugar in the raw cube, unrefined sugar cube. The brown ones, not the white ones. That's gonna be taken poorly out of context. We're gonna do about three to four dashes of orange bitters over the top of our sugar cube and then break up your sugar cube. And then we're gonna do one ounce of Applejack and you get extra points if your bottle looks old school like this. And that's of Laird's Applejack. And then we're gonna do one ounce of rye whiskey. I'm using Rittenhouse's uh, 100 proof, bottled in bond. One of my favorite whiskeys ever. And stir it down so it's nice, chilled and diluted. Put a large cube in your glass and then pour it right out. And then express one orange peel over the top. Marvelous. The orange bitters gives it a nice citrusy element and the Applejack really combines beautifully with that rye. Super simple, it's a nice variation on an old fashioned. Really tasty. Let's make the modern classic, the Revolver. Pew pew, pew 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 pew. For this one we're gonna do two ounces of an overproof bourbon. I am using Still Austin's cask strength bourbon. And two ounces of this. 
It's 59% ABV and it doesn't really drink like it, but I think it's gonna stand up beautifully in this cocktail. And then for my favorite part, a half ounce of a coffee liqueur. I'm using Mr. Black's, two dashes of orange bitters. And stir it down until it's nice, chilled, and diluted. Pour it out. Now this part's the most important. We're gonna grab an orange peel, a little torch, and you gotta flame your orange peel. Try not to burn your fingers like I just did. <laughs> and then just leave it on the end there. All right, the revolver. Mm. Now that is the kind of cocktail to wake you up in the morning. Jeffrey Morgenthaler is a genius for this one. Let's make his bourbon renewal. Very easy and absolutely incredible. One ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice, half ounce of simple syrup, a half ounce of creme de cassis, which is a liqueur made from Blackberries, I believe. Two ounces of bourbon. We're gonna go back to old granddad's bottled in bond. And one dash of Angostura bitters. Some fresh ice, and then we're just going to pour that out. The color is absolutely lovely. You should garnish with a lemon wheel, and if you have fresh blackberries or currants, I guess is the more appropriate term for what his creme de cassis is made out of, the bourbon renewal. Oh my gosh, that is outstanding. The creme de cassis and the lemon combine beautifully. You get that tart berry element. The bourbon really mixes well, and it's absolutely delightful. For net, either you love it or you hate it, but I think this cocktail is gonna turn you into a believer. Let's make the good enough Gatsby. Luckily, this is just a quarter ounce of Fernet, but that's all you need. It's gonna, it's gonna be powerful, but it's gonna be tasty. My favorite combination, powerful and tasty. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of fresh pineapple, three quarters of an ounce of cinnamon syrup, a half ounce of fresh lime, and then lastly, an ounce and a half of a good rye whiskey. I'm using Still Austin's rye. Add just a couple of cubes to your shaker and shake it up. All right, grab yourself a low ball and pour that right out. You're gonna fill it up with some pebble dice. Garnish with two pineapple fronds, and last but not least, some grated cinnamon right over the top. And there you have the Good Enough Gatsby. Mm. This is probably one of my favorite cocktails of all time. So good, refreshing, delightful, and the whiskey really provides a beautiful, complex, and crazy body. I love this. I'll see y'all later. Let's make an avenue scotch. We have to make some ginger syrup, so we're gonna make that fresh. I just have a vegetable juicer here, a fruit juicer. You can get one used at Savers. I think it's one of the best things that you can do to make fresh juice. You're gonna take your ginger and you're gonna juice it. And then you're just gonna wanna blend your uh, ginger juice with sugar to make a ginger syrup. Let's strain that out. So we've got about 150 mLs of ginger. We're gonna do equal parts with sugar. Should really be measured, like you should be weighing it, but it's fine. This measured, this was about 150 mLs, roughly. We're gonna do an ounce and a half of scotch. I'm gonna use a single malt, uh, 15 year Glen Murray. That's what I have at the moment. Not the smokiest scotch in the world, but I think it'll work good for this cocktail. We're gonna do a half ounce of our ginger syrup. I'm gonna try not to spill this. Oh, there we go. Yes. One ounce of passion fruit syrup. And three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And shake it. So I'm gonna grab our chilled coop and double strain. Look at that color. I'm supposed to be garnishing this with a, with a thyme sprig, but you know what? Since we don't have a thyme sprig, let's just do a dehydrated lime and pretend like that's totally fine, all right? Just between you and I. The Avenue Scotch. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. I love that. It's tropical. It's got that unmistakable passion fruit flavor. The ginger gives it that nice spice. Lime really gives it the nice citrus element that it needs but the maltiness from that scotch is incredible and it really shines through. That is one hell of a cocktail. Let's make a cocktail that I've made thousands upon thousands upon in my career, the Whiskey Smash. Super easy and very refreshing. So we're gonna grab 
half of a lemon cut up into cubes into our shaker tin. We're gonna do some really nice mint leaves, like maybe five or six mint leaves. Now we're gonna muddle this up. We're then gonna do two ounces of Buffalo Trace because this is exactly how I used to make it back in the day. One ounce of simple syrup and then we're gonna shake this without ice. And then we're gonna grab our low ball and strain it all out because we don't want any of these lemon pieces or mint pieces right in there. And then fill up with some pebbled or crushed ice. And then we're gonna garnish with a couple of mint sprigs, giving them a little spanky spank on the back of your hand. And right there. And there you have a whiskey smash. Mm. So good. Bourbon, mint, lemon. The best combination. Let's make by far one of the most popular and in my opinion, the best scotch cocktail out there, the penicillin. The penicillin was also created by Sam Ross, the same guy who created the paper plane. This dude is a genius and has made some of the best cocktails that we all know and love today. So first off, we're gonna start off with two ounces of a blended scotch. I'm using Cuddy Sark, cause it's what I got. Three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice. And so this next part's kind of funny. In the original recipe book regarding cocktails, it says three eighths of an ounce, which is just a little bit under a half. So we're just gonna do just a little under a half of honey syrup. And then also just a little under a half of our ginger syrup. Add ice. That's actually the funniest thing that has ever happened to me. I don't know how that escaped my hand. <laughs> I feel like I need to reconsider my life choices for a little bit. Um, ow. <laughs> I promise you, I am a professional. I've been doing this for almost 10 years now. <laughs> We're gonna grab our low ball, large cube. I ran out of the clear ones. I'm just having a day today. I'm struggling and pour that out. But we're not done yet. The last thing that's really gonna tie this all together is not breaking the cork. Jesus Christ. I don't know how many things can go wrong while making a cocktail, but I think we might be trying to break the record. Anyway, I'm using some Talisker. Uh, if you have Laphroaig, I think it'd be even better to use in this, or like Compass Box. I'm just gonna use a little bit of the Talisker 18 that I have, just do a little bit of a float over the top. I like a good amount of that smoke there. And there we have the penicillin. Mm. Out fucking standing, man. That is... I have no words, it's just one of the best scotch cocktails ever created. Just, yeah. If you never made one, you're missing out, dude. Hopefully with this video, I showed you that you can make way more and that the category of whiskey cocktails is so much more varied than what you see in a lot of places. That is just old fashions, Manhattans, and there's nothing wrong with those cocktails. There isn't, they're delightful. I love them. But with these, I hope I showed you that there's so much more that you can do. And if you can't get enough, I actually have this whole other video right over here next where I did 10 different rum cocktails that don't suck.